Okay, notebooks out. You will probably notice that there's not a lesson number on today's lesson. It is just lesson trig and special triangles review. Learning target today's students will apply their knowledge of sine, cosine, tangent, inverse, and special triangles to solve for missing information and right triangles. The main goal today is to do a little bit of review before our team test, which will be at the end of the period, to make sure we are ready for Thursday. Because what happens on Thursday? Uh, test. Unit test. The whole goal for beginning of semester two has been do things different in order to have different results. Maybe that's better notebook. Maybe that's Yep. Better notebook, better study habits, asking more questions, doing more homework. My hope is that we do better on this first test and not put us behind and have to make up work as we progress through the unit. I will give you another hint. This unit, we are having fewer tests than we did first semester. We're actually going to have more projects, fewer tests. So get the first couple unit tests out of the way with good grades. You're setting yourself up for success. Okay, I want to jump into it. If you still need the learning target, it's still up on the board as per usual. Notebook setup today is the first March 1st, 2022. Lesson Trig Review. What you put your notebook? We had two weeks of sunny, cold weather, and then of course the day that spring season starts, we got rain for a couple days, and a couple more coming. Okay, so we have a pretty full day today. I want to make sure we get through as much as we need to to make sure you guys walk out of this classroom today confident 
coming back in on Wednesday, no, nope, Thursday. Block schedule always gets me. Coming back on Thursday, ready and confident for the test. So that means any down periods today, you really need to focus on staying on task and keep side conversations to a minimum. I loved last period that anytime we had downtime where it was working, I heard things like adjacent and hypotenuse and triangle angle sum theorem, and I could actually hear that math conversations were happening. That's my goal for today as well. I do want to hear conversations, but let's try and keep it focused on what we're working on. I'll be handing out a pink sheet. This is part of your homework for today. It is test week. I do not like to give homework on test week. So part of your homework is ensuring you put what you need for the test onto this pink sheet. This pink sheet is what you can use to assist you on the test. We have been allowing your entire notebook historically. And then we found, talking to my geometry buddies, there were three categories of students when we were allowing notebooks for the test. Category one, the students that needed their notebook the most to help them on the test. And unfortunately, those students had the least amount in their notebook. Because the people that need this notebook the most are the people that aren't coming to class. If you're not coming to class, you don't have the notes. Or you just don't have a notebook. Number two was the students that have been taking amazing notes and doing all the homework and would have a perfect notebook to complete the test. We found that they didn't need their notebook because they were doing the work and the test became easy. So the notebook was pointless. So group one didn't have notes, needed them. Group two had the notes, didn't need them. Then there was a smaller group in the middle that had a bunch of notes, but there was so much and it was so disorganized that when it came test time, they didn't know where to look to get what they needed. That is what this is for. I want you to organize the information you feel you need for Wednesday's test, front and back on this piece of paper, and that's what you'll use for the test. This will be turned in with the test, with your name on it. I will staple it to the test when you turn it in. That is part of your homework today. Enhance your note sheet. Again, you will not be using your notebook. Anything you want to use on the test needs to be transferred to this pink sheet. Okay, is that clear? Same, same as pretty standard. Can I look? I would love to look. Yeah, there you go. There it is. As per standard, test three pages. There, sneak peek. So if you do not have homework, and you're confident, comfortable going into the test, another option for taking advantage of the no homework is to look back and see if there's anything you've missed. The whole reason why we assign homework isn't to torture you, it's to get you ready for the test. It doesn't make a ton of sense to do homework for this unit after the test, because the whole point of the homework is to get you ready for the test. So if there's unit homework that you have not done, please get it done before Thursday. Also, the longer you wait, I'll see what happens if you turn in late work. You get points taken off. So you have to do as much homework later that you could do in fewer assignments if you do it on time. The later it is, the more points that are taken off. Turn it on time, increases your chances of four out of four every time. Okay, for the sake of time, we're going to move forward a little bit. I am going to solve one problem off of the board using this method. Okay, I'm finding a lot of students are looking at some of these problems and getting lost and just being like, okay, I don't even know where to start, and giving up. First semester, I saw way too many tests turned in with questions blank. 
Okay. Is it, let's see, is it Gretzky or Jordan that said you miss 100% of the shots you don't take? I think it was Jordan. Okay. So, I'll go ahead and nerdify a sports quote and turn it into a math quote, but you will also miss 100% of the problems you don't attempt. Today I'm going to hopefully give you some tools that you can put on your pink sheet to hopefully get you started on these problems and get you some points. If, you're sh if you show me that you're going in the right direction and some of these math concepts are starting to make sense, even if you don't get all the way to the solution, I'll be able to see your creative thinking and the thought process that can earn you some points. What I don't want to see is blank tests turned in with just an A. So I'll grab my dry erase marker. We will do the first one, just me showing you what this is all about, and then we'll move forward. No, I'll do the first one. So up here on the board, I have a multiple triangles. We'll start with this one right here. It looks similar to something that you might see on the test. So the first question I'm going to ask myself on these trick problems is, what is provided? I'm going to look and I'm going to see that there's an angle provided and the opposite side is provided. I know it's the opposite side because from the angle, I have to move across the triangle to the opposite side, and that's why I know that the 16 is the opposite side. Step one complete. What am I trying to solve for? What is the variable? X, in this case, is the adjacent side. So now right out the gate, I know what's provided and what's being asked. What am I trying to solve for? I use this information to decide which tool I need to use. We have an O and we have an S. So I look up at my Sokotoa. Uh, I just did S instead of A. My bad, sorry. Getting ahead of myself. We have an O and A. Because S is not a thing. Sokotoa. I look for my O and my A put together, and that's going to tell me that I'm going to use my T. And my T is tangent. What's up? Or a what? I'm sorry. A ruler. we know what's provided, what we're trying to solve for, and what tool we're going to use to get there. Next step is we're going to set up our equation. First thing we need to write down is the tool we identified, tangent. We plug in the reference angle, which we pull out from the problem, 16 equals. And then our SOCA TOA tells us how to set up the equation because TOA, where tangent is, is opposite over adjacent. Opposite was 16, adjacent is x. That is your equation. We're working our way further and further towards full points on this problem if it was on a test. Any of these steps is better than nothing. Pay close attention to two things. This is one thing I would make sure to have on my pink sheet. And the difference is if the x or the variable is in the denominator or the numerator. If the x is in the denominator, we're going to end up dividing. If it's in the numerator, we're going to multiply. So remember, denominator, divide. So if you go to multiply to find your solution, it's not going to work. And I'll show you why here in a minute. I will have 16. How do you know? How do you know? Is that the question? Always. Because based off when you cross multiply here, 
Like how do you know which one it goes? Like if it's enough. So it totally tells you which one to go on top, which one goes on the bottom. Okay, so I'll enhance Sokotoa for us over here in the tardy zone. Sokotoa sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, ta, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. So if you remember Sokotoa, or you have Sokotoa written down on your pink sheet, you remember which order to write things down. To the denominator, you mean divide, correct? Yeah. If x is in the denominator, you're going to end up dividing. And the reason why, if I do my cross multiply, I'm going to have 16 on this side. On the other side, I'm going to have x times the tangent of 16. If I have x and I'm multiplying the, the tangent of 16, we learn in algebra, how do I get rid of something that's being multiplied by x? Divide. Divide. I do the opposite. If I'm multiplying, I want to get rid of it, then I divide it by both sides. Tangent of 16, tangent of 16. Your equation set up, you did your cross multiply, and this is where I'm saying we divide because x is in the denominator. I grab my calculator, I say 16 divided by the tangent of 16, and it gives me 55.798. Side lengths we round to the nearest tenth. Angles we round to the nearest one for whole degree, nearest degree, good. So in this case, we have 55.8 is our solution. Savannah, so you asked if what happens if I set it up wrong or how do I know? It would be a good indicator if I set it up wrong on some of these problems. If I looked at this problem, Okay, 16 degrees is going to be opposite of the smaller side. Mm -hmm. The bigger angle, so if this is 16 and this is 90, we know what this angle needs to be due to triangle angle sum. So I know that this side, because this angle is bigger, this side has to be bigger than this side. If I flip it the other way, the this is going to be shorter instead of bigger. If the angles are bigger, that means the sides further to them? Huh. The bigger the angle on this side, the bigger the side length on the other side. The smaller the angle, the shorter the opposite side. So the side on the other side, you can look at by the size of the angle. That's just a quick reference. When the hypotenuse is involved, the hypotenuse has to be the what? Good, the long side, Mr. Well. Okay, um, I'm going to take, yeah. Also, yeah. Um, for angles, what do you round to again? Angles is the nearest whole, okay. nearest degree. And that, the, that information will be in the instructions on the test. Honor students, please pay close attention to all instructions. In order to get sixes, on the rubric, you will see that you have to round correctly. Make sure you're following directions clearly. You should already, because of last period, you should have a dry erase board and a dry erase marker at your table group. You probably also have tracing paper that you can use as an eraser. If you do not have one of those things, resource manager today is D. Please send your resource manager to get a dry erase board and a dry erase marker. At this point in time, love you guys, Nina. Stay at least for a second. Go ahead. I was waiting, so I don't want to miss the instruction. At this point in time, as a table group, I want you to look up at the board and see the problems that are up here. 
as a table group, I want you to decide on two problems that if you saw them on the test, you would have more difficulty than any of the other problems. When you've decided as a table group, you can come up and under that shape, use your dry erase marker and give me a star on the board. Okay, give you a minute and a half. Are we doing those problems then? Talk as a table group. Talk as a table group. Decide which ones you need, you think you or your table group need most direction on which ones you might want to add to your pink sheet. We will type, take the problems that are most popular as needing help on, and those are the ones we'll do as a class before the team test. Um, I thought we were doing, so we're not doing all of them though? I think you said that. So Dan, are these all on the team test? These are just examples. Okay, talk to your table group. You got a minute and a half. And then once you've decided, please send your reporter, person B, up to the board to mark your two problems. So we will start. Oh, I, I, I sent the pattern here. Uh, I 
would find five too. Five would have been small. Go up there and start all of them. Alright, bring attention back here in five. Can you? No. That means you can't do that. If you need to turn so you can see, feel free to turn and see, follow along. We will start here. And we'll move to there. Okay. Potentially, doing this problem will make that one easier, but we will go ahead and do both. I would like the whiteboard to be at seat A. If you do not have anybody at seat A, please rotate one position. Spell it. Person in seat A, please write down on your whiteboard, step one, what is provided in this question. Write it down on your whiteboard. Uh, What is provided in that triangle? Um, what is provided in that triangle? Um, There's a funny song. I think I heard it. I can't see the right side. Um, what is provided in that Whiteboard's up in three, two, one. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Table group five. What's provided? side of the shape, that is our opposite. And the hypotenuse is on the other side of the shape from the it, yeah, it's opposite of the adjacent, but the, yeah, as you know, the right angle points to the hypotenuse. Good. So we know that we are provided the opposite and hypotenuse. Pass the whiteboard one person to your left. Please write down what is the variable or what are we trying to solve? What's missing? 
angle measurement. Good. So I can put down here an angle is missing to try to solve for our theta. Go ahead and pass your whiteboard. Okay, the next person is identifying what tool we are going to use. So using what's provided and what we're trying to solve for, please write down what tool we are going to use. Get that on your whiteboard. for the tool that we're going to use to solve. Okay, whiteboards in three, two, one. Okay, table group one. What sign are we using? Sign. Sign. Good start. We knew we were using a variation of sine by using what we have, opposite and hypotenuse. We look up here, opposite and hypotenuse. Table group three, what variation of sine am I using? Inverse. Why am I using inverse? Because I'm missing the angle, not the side length. If I have two sides and I'm solving for an angle, or a theta. I'm using the inverse sign. So the tool is inverse sign. I'm using inverse if I've provided two side lengths and I'm solving for an angle. If that wasn't clear, or if that's one of the reasons why you put your star on this shape, where should you put that information? On your pink sheet, as a reminder, on the test. So if you see a problem like this, you know what to do when you follow your steps. Please rotate. Dry erase board, one person. Erase the board and please set up the equation that you would do using inverse sign to solve this problem. If you're unsure, that's why we have table groups. Talk to each other. Whiteboard, three, two, one. Let's see what you got. 
supposed to do it. Tell me inverse sine parentheses and you had 25 over 48. Yes. How did you know which one to put on top? Good. So go back to Sokotoa because it tells you what order to put it in. Sine, whether it's sine or it's inverse, the order stays the same. We're going to put it opposite over hypotenuse. These, as we can see by the number of stars, these questions are the ones we were most scared of. These questions, as far as setup and calculating, are the easiest. Do I have to cross multiply here? No. The equation is now set up for me, and I just enter exactly into the calculator what I see right there on the board. How do I get to inverse sign? Good. Hit the second button, which is that blue one in the corner. I want everybody to grab a calculator make sure you can do this. There's enough, there's one in table group for everybody. Please push second. Push sign. And it should show you the sign inverse indicator. And it should open the parentheses for you. From there, you're going to put in the 25 divided by 48. Close the parentheses if you want to in the calculators. It assumes it's closed if you don't close it. I need to enter this. That's why I want everybody to do this. I was serious when I said everybody. Show me on the calculator how to put it in. Hit the second button. Sign. We did. What, what did we say on the board? It was one over what? Twenty-five divided by forty-eight. That easy. Again, we've got domain error, or put something in wrong. I'm going to move that one. Perfect. I thought it was a Good question. So if this is an angle, we round to the nearest? Yes. Oh. Here's degree. So 31.3888, we would put down as? 31. 31 is our answer. 31 degrees. Get a chance, Good. 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 wait what is not a question. Can you Do, define the question for me? It's orange. Angles to the nearest degree, side lengths to the nearest tenth. 
just heard about. How's the other? Did we figure out the weight what? Yeah. No assistance needed? No. Alright. My uh, younger son's favorite question is wait, what? Okay, bring it back. <laughs> Kyle, that's a good question. I want the whole class to hear. Um, how come on there it was 40 divided by 25, but then on the calculator it was like 25 divided by 25. Okay. So sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So when we set up our equation, sine, inverse sine, opposite, which is 25, mm -hmm. over the hypotenuse. So inverse sine is 25 divided by 48. 25 over 48. Because if fraction is just the top number, divided by the second number. Because what's one half as a decimal? 0. 0.5. If I put my calculator, one divided by two, what do I get? 0. 0.5. Fractions are just division, it's a ratio. One is half of two. So if you have Soka Toa written down, I highly recommend you write it down in this manner on your kink sheet if you're struggling to remember what goes over what. If you need to enhance it even further, put, instead of O, put opposite and hypotenuse, adjacent and hypotenuse, or opposite and adjacent. This is true for either sine or inverse sine, tangent, inverse tangent, you're setting it up the same way. Kyle, does that make sense? Yeah. I don't know for more. As soon as I pass those back. Okay. Give me a thumbs up from table group. We can move on. scared of this one because we didn't know how to do this one, but now we know how to do this one, we know how to do this one. Okay, the only difference I want us to focus on here, so it will make us go through the whole process, I will touch it quickly just in case I still see a couple eyebrows slanted, but there might still be some confusion going on. So real quick, what's provided here, over there was opposite and hypotenuse, here what's provided is adjacent, good, thank you, adjacent and the opposite. From the theta, the opposite side is provided and the adjacent side. Still what we're looking for is our angle, which is our theta. But using adjacent and opposite, A and O, I come over here and find the tool that uses A and O, which is tangent. So I'm using tangent and I'm solving for an angle, so I use what variation of tangent? Inverse. Inverse. Good job. And I'm going to set that up, tangent, inverse, okay? Over there it tells me tangent is opposite over adjacent. I'm going to 31 and 32 in my calculator and solve. Going back to special triangles. This might be, this is extra, so if, <laughs> that is one of them. If this was a 32, and this was a 32, what would theta be? With confidence? 45. 
we learned that if my opposite and my adjacent are a one to one ratio, we learned that that is a one to one ratio is a 45 degree angle. So I know that my answer is going to be pretty close to 45 degrees. Then grab the calculator. Second tangent, 31 divided by 32. Tangent inverse, 31 divided by 32. 31 over 32. 44 degrees. You're pretty close to 45. So we can use our special triangles and our knowledge that we know about those. Kyle, you're good to go. We can use our special triangle rules to even check things that are close to those rules. Like I said, with these problems, with the right notes and following the right steps, these become very easy. On the test, these might be some of the easier ones that you see, other than the special triangles, because those are lippity split. Okay, the only other one that I had multiple stars on was this one here. Okay, rotate your whiteboard. I want the first person to do the first step and identify what is provided. Two stars. Okay, whiteboards in three, two, one. What is provided? Angle and hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. Angle and hypotenuse. Hypotenuse and angle. Angle and hypotenuse. Good. We're getting there. I thought you guys said this is one of the tough ones. And every table group is giving me something. So that means on the test, every table group is going to have something written on every question, right? Yeah. Hope so. Provided is an angle and the hypotenuse. Again, the hypotenuse is the one that's across from the 18 degree angle. What are we trying to solve for? D, you say the missing side length. Which side length? X is the variable. Huh? Good. What is the angle? What is the angle? No, what does it say? 46. So we're trying to solve for X, which in this case is the adjacent side. It's the one that's touching instead of the one that's opposite. Okay, shift the whiteboard. Based off of provided angle, provided hypotenuse, solving for adjacent, what tool are we going to use? Please write that on your whiteboard. What tool are we going to use based off of step one and step two?
side length, so we're not using inverse, we're using our regular cosine. Please rotate the boards. Savannah, was there a weight? I'm low. Set up the equation. angle is 46, so write that down, equals, and then Sokotoa up there has adjacent over hypotenuse, which you have here, adjacent and hypotenuse, so which one's the adjacent? X over 18, put that there. Sure. 